never let what you want to say get in the way of what your audience wants to hear. Conduct communications intelligence. Ask them. Listen to what they're telling you. And then craft and create a story out of your experiences and things you've observed and learned to begin to allow them to see a vision of themselves differently than what they had when you came in. Orchestrate an experience. That experience is major. If, if information could change people, everybody would be skinny, rich, and happy. Most people have goals in life. And we would both think you gotta be goal-oriented. That's the first mistake. Yes, you need goals, but there's something far beyond goals, which is what all successful people have, and that's a vision. A vision is about what you're here to create. A vision that really works is one that excites you. You gotta have a vision. A vision for what it is you really, truly want. Not what you think you want or what you should have. You've got to focus on you. And as you convince you, as you sell yourself, every day, every day, every day, you will begin to see a difference in the things that you're doing. Selling yourself on your ability to perform a job, to achieve a certain objective. Telling yourself every day, here I go again, and I got what it takes. This is my day, and nothing out here is going to stop me. If you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. And then he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Where all you want to do is be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. Most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You got to be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, some days you will have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you got to want it. I boiled it down to five major pieces to the life puzzle. Let's just review those. Number one is philosophy. Philosophy, as I taught the last time I was here, philosophy, in my personal opinion, is the major determining factor in how your life works out. Philosophy, the major determining factor in how your life works out. Philosophy, to form our philosophy, you got to think, got to use your mind, got to process ideas. And this whole process over a lifetime, starting way back here when we were children, schools that we've attended, our parents, our experiences, all this stuff that we've processed by the thinking process helps to develop our philosophy. And in my opinion, each person's personal philosophy is the major factor in how your life works out. Here's what I called it in that last presentation when I was here. It's called the set of the sail. Each person's personal philosophy is like the set of the sail. Here's what's exciting about each person's personal philosophy. That's what makes us different than dogs and animals and birds and cats and spiders and alligators. That's what makes us different than all other life forms. The ability to think, the ability to use your mind, the ability to process ideas and not just operate by instinct. In the winter, I'm telling you, the goose can only fly south. What if south doesn't look too good? Tough luck. It can only fly south. But see, human beings are not like a goose. It can only fly south. I mean, you can turn around, go north, you can go east, you can go west, you can order the entire process of your own life. And we do that by the way we think. We do that by exercising our mind. We do that by processing ideas and come up with a better philosophy, a better strategy for our life, goals for the future.
okay? Plans to achieve those goals. All this comes from developing our philosophy. Philosophy helps us to process what's available. Well, when we get here, we got seed and we got soil and we got some rain and we've got some what? Sunshine and we've got some seasons and what? The miracle of life. Now the key is, what do you do with all this stuff? How do you turn all this stuff that's available here into equity and promise and lifestyle and dreams and future possibilities? All of this that's possible now with human beings, how do you take all this stuff and turn it into this equities and values? Well, it starts with philosophy. What is the seed? What is the soil? What is the sunshine? What is the rain? Is it possible to take some of each of all the stuff that's available and turn it into food, and turn it into value, and turn it into nourishment, turn it into something spectacular and unique that no other life form can do? And the answer is yes. But you cannot deal with all this stuff and what to do with it unless you start refining your philosophy. Think, use your mind, come up with ideas, and strengthen your philosophy. There is an energy in the universe. There is something that is in each and every one of us. And it's also in the universe. And you are connected to it in a way that is often uh, perceived to be uh, oh, aloof from us because it's invisible, because it's in the world of what we call spirit, the world that is not material. And I would like to suggest that you suspend your disbelief, allow yourself to know that you're not a human being here having a spiritual experience but that is the other way around that you're a spiritual being having a human experience and the quality of your human experience is really much more dependent upon how you use this invisible intelligence and how you connect to this energy and once you have an awareness that you can never be separate from it that you and it, and whatever you call it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you call it God, if you call it divine presence, if you call it soul, if you call it spirit, if you call it consciousness, if you call it Christ consciousness, you can call it Buddha consciousness, you can call it Louise, you can call it Edna, you can call it Ralph. Alan Watts once said that you can't get wet from the word water. It isn't the word that allows you to experience water. And whatever it is that you call it is something that is distinct from what it is. When I was walking in here this evening on these beautiful grounds, I saw some people looking at the flowers and the different plants that were growing. And as they were looking at them, there was one person who was obviously an expert, a botanist of some kind, and he was trying to explain to each one of the people what the name was, the technical name for each one of the flowers. And I was watching that and thinking, it doesn't matter what you call it. Can't you enjoy? Look at that thing. It's orange and it just came out of nowhere. There's something very profound about enjoying it and, and being there with it rather than being obsessed with labeling it. There was a very famous Danish theologian. His name was Soren Kierkegaard. He once said that once you label me, you negate me. Once you place a label on me and, and put me into a compartment or a category of some kind, I must then become what it is that you have labeled me to be. So that we want to be able to live our lives and to practice principles of higher awareness without being so consumed with what I call ordinary human awareness. And ordinary human awareness is just the recognition or the belief system that I am a human being. Maybe I'm having a spiritual experience, I'm not quite sure. But higher human awareness what is sometimes in the East called Siddhi awareness. In the West it's been called higher consciousness or Christ consciousness. There's many names for it. But when you get beyond just knowing yourself as this body and this personality and this thing that you inhabit and begin to realize that who you are is that which was never born and can never die. When you recognize your eternal self and that's what this program is really about. It's really about recognizing the power, the energy, the capacity to be able to do what it says in some of the most holy books that you've ever read. 
that even the least among you can do all that I have done and even greater things. And that's not just empty words from Holy Scriptures. That's a very powerful lesson that each and every one of us can practice and live every day.